There is a game so captivating and fascinating that even an atomic bomb wasn't enough to keep its players from finishing it. Wow. The ancient Chinese game of Go has been framed as the last threshold of the superiority of human intelligence over artificial intelligence. Are you talking about me? No matter how advanced, no computer program could ever beat a real Go master. That is, until last year. Did we really just witness the first step towards AI taking over our world? No! Well, the short answer is no. The long answer is... At the time of the match, every major news organization covered the story as a new horizon in AI research. Machine has triumphed over man. We may be entering an age of thinking machines. They've become so dominant that they're raising doubts about the future of humanity. And while that much is true, the language of their coverage misled the public opinion on the subject. But before we get into any of that, I have to first tell you about Go, how computers play it, and anthropomorphism, or our tendency to humanize non-humans. <laughs> So a small company called DeepMind created the software and named it AlphaGo. I mean, softwares that could play the game had existed long before, but none could ever tackle a real Go master. But why was it so hard? I mean, after all, people had made computers that could play chess well enough to beat world champions way back in the 90s. Because Go is different than chess. Very different. The game is simple, or so it seems. There's a 19 by 19 board, two players, and black and white identical stones. It starts on an empty board. At each turn, one of the players places a stone at one of the 250 possible choices at their disposal. The aim is to gain as much territory on the board as possible. It's incredibly easy to learn, and yet, extremely difficult to master. So then, how did AlphaGo do it? They employed a number of complicated methods, which I don't fully understand. But for all the non-super geniuses like myself out there, here's the simple version. The program looks at a few solid moves to begin with, instead of running through all of them. Then, tracks them a couple of turns ahead. All of this keeps numbers manageable for the computer. Then it chooses out several good strategies that seem to lead to a more dynamic game and tracks what would happen if it were to play those moves many, many, many turns ahead into the game. But this is not a perfect system because there is some choice involved. Which is why Lisa Dole, who has been a professional player of Go since he was 12, could still beat AlphaGo in one of the games that they played. AlphaGo was programmed as a deep learning software. What this means is that with the required systems in place and the information, the program came up with the solutions itself. In other words, AlphaGo taught itself how to play the game. Wait. What do you mean? This is the part of the story that makes AlphaGo look most human. Because if something has the ability to learn, can it be taught other things? The commentators of the game kept saying things like AlphaGo made a beautiful move or that it was playing creatively. But it was just math. Really beautifully thought out math. But the beauty could be traced back to the human minds that came up with it. But of course, it makes for a better story to talk about thinking robots that are becoming more intelligent than us. After all, we've dedicated an entire genre to this in literature, cinema, and television. These speculations are provocative, but not totally unfound in real science. Although it slips in and out of our collective consciousness, artificial intelligence is a big deal. A star was coming! To Turkey now, where a severe hailstorm has pounded cities across the country. So we weren't filming, but now it's hailing! So that happened. And no, we didn't come in a week later to shoot the rest of this. We came in directly from the hailstorm. Although it slips in and out of our collective consciousness, artificial intelligence research is a big deal. Estimations tell us just last year, companies worldwide invested between 26 to 39 billion dollars in AI research. This is madness. U.S. federal budget dedicates 77 billion dollars to defense research and development, a significant, albeit classified, portion of which is dedicated to AI. We're building Iron Man. Not really. Maybe. It's classified. 
And China recently announced major investment plans to lead the AI industry in the next decade. Let's say China. 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 So yeah, lots of money. But does it mean we're going down a path towards Terminators? Some of the sensationalism is to spark general public's interest, of course. Media wants to be clickable, and science wants to be understandable. And more importantly, fundable. Real science is slow and humble. But spectacles such as the match between world champion Lisa Dole and AlphaGo invite a broader public to take interest in AI research. So people love to talk about AlphaGo as though it's a real person. It plays and wins games, it teaches itself how to play Go, and we do this to other AI programs as well. I mean, we have Siri and Alexa. You suck, Siri. <laughs> hey, don't talk to her like that. She's a lady. People already have robotic toys for their children or home assistants that can be personalized. In Japan, you can purchase a holographic female assistant, which some call a virtual girlfriend. So we interact with AI as though it has consciousness because it seems to have consciousness. I think the reason why we do this is because we're born dualists. Yale professor Paul Bloom says babies are born with an assumption that living things have immaterial parts to themselves. Some might call a soul. So given that, you might see how it is easy for many of us to imagine that these human-like robots have some immaterial existence, like even a soul. Just a final thought, computers may be better at answering questions, but humans will always be the ones asking them. How rude! What do you think? Are computers that can play games precursors to conscious artificial intelligence? Or are we simply too eager to humanize anything that talks, looks, acts, even remotely like ourselves? <laughs>